Okay, so we're going to work on simplifying radicals. I've got a couple problems here that we can try. I'm working on an iPad with just a finger, so bear with me. The first problem here on the left is a square root of 8x cubed y to the fourth. Now, that expression, 8x cubed y to the fourth, is not a perfect square. And we've learned a property that says we can factor one radical into two radicals that when multiplied together would create 8x cubed y to the fourth. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. With smaller numbers and certain numbers, students are going to be better at looking at this and picking out factors of each of the factors above that would be a perfect square factor. For example, the 8. 8 is not a perfect square, but it's divisible by 1. It's divisible by 4, which is. And so we would take that 8 and factor it into a perfect square factor of 4 times the other factor of 2. And the whole point of factoring that 8 is that we have found a perfect square factor. We would not factor it uh, into just any two random numbers. The point would be looking for a perfect square factor. So I'm going to collect these perfect square factors on the left radical and any non-perfect square factors I'd put on the right. Now, the next factor in the radicand above is the x cubed. It is also not a perfect square, but x cubed can be factored to be x squared times x to the first. And so I'll factor that x cubed and x squared and x. x squared is a perfect square. And the last term here, the y to the fourth, well, that is a perfect square. So I don't need to factor it. If I have a perfect square factor, just keep it as it is. So I'm going to take the y to the fourth and put it in the radical on the left where I'm collecting my perfect square factors. And I don't have any y's on the right because I didn't break it apart. Okay. The next step, so what I just did, is I collected all my perfect square factors in one radical. That square root can now be evaluated nicely. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x to the first. And the square root of y to the fourth is y squared. Now there's another little detail about that expression I just wrote that I'm going to come back to. Some of you might be anticipating it. I'll be there in just a second. The other factor, the square root of 2x, well, those are non-perfect square factors. And I've factored them as much as I can. There aren't any other perfect squares other than one in there. So that just has to stay in the radical. And I bring it down, and it is the square root of 2x. Now, the other little detail that I mentioned a second ago, and uh, this is just a little acronym I, I use to tell my students to memorize. I tell them anytime working with radicals and variables to think about EVO. EVO stands for even roots, E for even roots, which this is. I have a square root, which is 2 is an even number, of variables. And I have variables certainly here. So if I have an even root and I have variables, and those variables come outside the radical as odd roots, so this is an even root of a variable that come out with an odd power. So even root of a variable that gets an odd power will need an absolute value sign. And this x right here is an x to the first. That x to the first came out of an even root. And it now is x to an odd power. <coughs> and that's a little detail that um, you can go back and we can discuss in another video or something, but um, that x would work out to be uh, a positive x, and, and to note that even if the original x in the expression was represented a negative value, we need to note that that would be a positive x or part of a principal root. So there you have it. That is our simplified radical. The point of that was to get as much as possible out from the radical sign, even though I didn't have a perfect square, I got as much as I could out, and I left the least amount of factors, the least amount of stuff inside the square root sign. And at the end of the day, that's really our goal, is to simplify that down and have as little as possible inside. All right, let's switch over to the right. 
and take a look at the cube root. Now, when I'm dealing with the cube root, I am looking for not a perfect square, but a perfect cube. The factors that you look for have to correspond to the type of root we're working with. This is a cube root, or index 3. Okay, that's our index number. It tells us how many times we need a number to multiply by, it, to multiply by itself to create <coughs> the radicand, what was inside. Now let's take a different strategy. Like I said earlier on the problem on the left, some of you guys are good at looking at that and saying, okay, you know what, 8, I see a perfect square of 4. Sometimes some of you might look at a number here in 54 and say, uh, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not even sure what perfect cubes are. So here's another strategy. And this strategy involves simply really making a factor tree. Trying to factor that 54 down into the prime factorization. So let's just work on that real quick. 54. Can you think of two numbers that multiply together to be 54? How about, say, 6 times 9? Okay? And those two numbers are factorable, so break those down. 6 is 2 times 3, and 9 is 3 times 3. Okay? At that point, we have all prime numbers. That's the prime factorization. Okay? So we have the cube root of 54, right now it's, that 54 is expressed as a product of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3, and then we have the x to the fifth and the y, and you can factor those down as well. Now what I'm going to tell you the variables is, what I would do is break that x to the fifth into the biggest uh, kind of uh, multiple of 3 that you can get in terms of the exponent. What's the biggest multiple of 3 that is uh, 5 or smaller and well that would be x cubed and so I would break the x to the fifth into be an x to the third times an x to the squared remember we add exponents when multiplying with these like bases x cubed times x squared they both have a base x we would add the 3 and the 2 so 3 plus 2 is 5 <coughs> and the y is just a y to the first you cannot get a group of three or a y cubed so we just leave it as y alright so here's the deal you get the prime factorization you factor all out now because we're working with a cube root a cube root or should I say a perfect cube would be a value that can be factored into something times itself three times right so we know that it takes three of the same factor to create a perfect cube well that means if I can find three of the exact same factor a group of three I know that those will create a perfect cube. And so I will then be able to take the cube root of that perfect cube. And in essence, it takes three of the same factor on the inside of a cube root, and three because we're working with the cube root, to create one three on the outside. So I'm going to take those three factors from inside the cube root. I get to take them out. I'm going to put them in front of the cube root sign and they turn into one three. A group of three on the inside of a cube root turns into one factor of three on the outside. Now, I have another group of three, and that is with the x's. x cubed is x times x times x. That group of three factors that are all the same also come out in front as a single x. Looking at what's left inside the radical, inside the cube root, I cannot make another group of three common factors. I have a two, but I have no more twos, right? I don't have, uh, you know, the x squared, that's not a, a two, that's, that's really representing x times x. So this is the only number left, just a two. I would need two more twos to be able to create another set where I could pull something out, so not even close. Now the x squared is an x times x, that's really two x factors, and one short. And the y is y to the first, I'm two y factor short. So at this point, I'm going to write my cube root symbol. And those factors, the 2, the x squared, and the y, that didn't have enough to create another group of 3, they just have to stay inside the cube root symbol. So I have left a 2, an x squared, and a y inside. 
and at that point I would double check that my <coughs> scroll up a little bit <clears throat> I would double check that what I have inside does not have any factors that would be perfect cubes or that I couldn't factor anything down you know just take one last glance and then I'd be content and happy I do remind my students anytime you're working with square roots or, or sorry radicals in general roots and variables to do a quick check of hey did I have evo did I have an even root of a variable that got out of power well in this case I didn't have an even root even roots are the only time when we might use an absolute value sign so here I don't even have to worry about an absolute value sign at all because I had an odd root a cube root is an odd three is an odd number so I'm done and there is my answer